Hello learners, this video talks about the ecosystem and its various components. As you all must be knowing, the ecosystem is a community of living organisms interacting with their physical environment. So, the Earth's life support system basically consists of four main components, the geosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and finally the biosphere. The first three components, the geosphere, the atmosphere, and the hydrosphere make up for the physical components or the physical environment, and the biosphere makes up for the living environment. So as you can see, these are all of the four spheres that are interacting with each other and we'll study about them one by one. Starting with the geosphere. The geosphere is basically the part of the earth system consisting of rocks, minerals, sediments. It includes the crust of the earth, the mantle and finally the core. So the uppermost portion is called the crust which contains all the soil layers and where all the organisms live, grow, reproduce and thus it provides an important ecological habitat and basis of many forms of life. The various processes taking place on the surface of the geosphere include soil erosion, weathering, transport of materials as well as tectonic movement and volcanic activities and which results in the formation of landforms like mountains, hills, etc. So this is a 3D diagram of the structure of the geosphere. The uppermost layer is called the crust. Next comes the mantle and finally the core. So now the mantle has two parts. The upper mantle which is solid and the inner mantle which is liquid and the upper mantle as well as the crust consists of the lithosphere so it is the solid part so there is the boundary wall between the liquid and solid part which is known as the asthenosphere so that is basically the boundary between the the lower mantle and the upper mantle now the core of the earth is basically also divided into two parts the upper the outer core and the inner core the inner core is solid and the outer core is again liquid the temperature is really high here and it extends to about 6000 kilometers depth it is basically made up of something called knife which is basically your nickel and iron the next layer is the atmosphere as you all know that the atmosphere is a gaseous layer surrounding the Earth's surface and it is held on to by the gravity of the Earth. The first layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere. So this is the major layer where all our weather phenomena happen and it is due to the circulation of water vapors. All the majority of the gases are also present in the troposphere and it extends from about 8 to 15 kilometers. And the atmosphere, uh, troposphere is the layer of the atmosphere which is in direct contact with the lithosphere, the hydrosphere, the cryosphere and biosphere. That is why it is linked to the sustenance of life and the living conditions of the earth. Stratosphere is the next layer that comes in the atmosphere after the troposphere. So stratosphere houses the majority of the ozone in the atmosphere. And it is a very useful layer because it absorbs the majority of incoming UV radiations from the sun. And due to this absorbance, there is a gradual temperature increase with height, which was the opposite in the troposphere. In troposphere, along with increasing height, the temperature decreased. So here it peaks at about 50, uh, uh, near 50 kilometer height. The next layer uh, of the atmosphere is the mesosphere. This is the region just above stratopause. Stratopause is the place where the stratosphere ceases to exist and merges into the mesosphere. It extends till about 50 to 80 kilometers and the temperature decreases here again um, uh, till about uh, minus 90 degrees centigrade. So 
So as you can see here, all the layers are shown. The troposphere, where even the highest mountain uh, is present, and majority of the weather phenomena, clouds, everything happens over here. And commercial jets also fly along this this plane. And stratosphere is the place which is much more calmer. That is why this layer uh, is preferred by the uh, jets because of low turbulence. Even weather balloons prefer to be laid down in this layer. And this is the mesosphere. And finally comes your next layer which is thermosphere. Thermosphere basically lies above the mesosphere where temperature increases again with height due to the absorption of energetic UV rays and X-rays from the sun. It extends to about 80, uh, it extends from 80 km up to the outer space. So it kind of does not have any particular boundary. It merges into the outer space. Uh, and the high energetic X-rays and UV rays from the sun separates all the uh, molecules into its elemental form over there. Now, very important ionosphere. Ionosphere is no particular uh, uh, bound layer in the atmosphere. It is basically a region around 80 km above the ground where more or less the positively ionized species exists due to the knocking of electrons of the gas atoms and molecules by the highly energetic solar and cosmic radiations. So it does not have a particular bound layer it can extend to from wherever there is energetic radiations and exosphere is the region uh, above 500 km above uh, the ground where oxygen and hydrogen gases are the main constituents and it is con uh, constantly being exchanged with the outer space and uh, when there is solar radiation in the day it puffs up to about 1000 km and when there is less sunlight it kind of contracts itself so these ionosphere and exosphere, these two layers do not have any specific boundaries. The next layer is the hydrosphere. It includes all the gaseous liquid frozen water on the earth system. Uh, and it has all the oceans, seas, polarized glaciers, icebergs, lakes, rivers, streams, etc. And as well as the moisture and water vapor present in the soil. It includes salt water as well as fresh water systems. Uh, glaciers and iceberg as you all know lost 2% of the total fresh water on the earth and the remaining 1% is found as surface water and ground waters. Water is an essential source for the existence of life and for the maintenance of life on earth and earth's temperature is also greatly influenced by the presence of water. Okay, So the glaciers, icebergs and ice caps etc are collectively known as the cryosphere or the sphere of um, ice and snow, you could call it like that. The hydrosphere is a lot of times depicted through the water cycle. So, as you all must have read in school, that the water cycle is a cycle where there is a constant exchange of water through its various forms, solid, liquid, and gas, through various compartments of the uh, of the earth. For example, water gets evaporated and then it condenses to form clouds and then it again precipitates out in the form of water. And that water goes into the ground as well as fresh water uh, source as well as into the ocean. So it is constantly being cycled. There is no uh, production of water. There is always a cycling of water. And the most important sphere is the biosphere. It includes all the zones of the earth where life is present. So much of the biosphere is contained within shallow surface area encompassing the lower part of the atmosphere, surface of the geosphere and approximately the upper 100 meters of the ocean. All living organisms in the biosphere are intimately related to the other three spheres as most living organisms require gases from the atmosphere, water from the hydrosphere and nutrients and minerals from the geosphere. The biosphere functions in terms of processes and cycles, such as the climate processes, biogeochemical cycles, and hydrological cycle. The ability of utilizing and altering all aspects of the Earth system includes natural resources, directly or indirectly, place human beings in a seemingly inevitable competition with all other organisms. So, human beings are the 
kind of only creature who can alter this entire process for their own needs the main components of the earth system are interconnected by two main factors the first one is one way flow of energy from the sun so sun is the major source of energy for all living organisms and living organisms also derive energy through eating each other through their feeding interactions and when an organism dies it is again gone into the environment in the form of heat and the second most uh, important part of flow of energy is the heating by of the earth by the solar energy which is also known as greenhouse effect and it makes the earth sustainable uh, without the greenhouse effect the earth would ha not have been habitable by the uh, living organisms the second uh, factor is nutrient cycling nutrient cycling is through uh, is the process through which the major biogeochemical cycles occur that is the carbon oxygen hydrogen nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur cycles all of which are essential for life so these biogeochemical cycles operate at a global scale and involves the main components of the earth system thus matter is transferred continuously between all the four spheres